Hey, salut everyone. After this video, you will know if Fedora 40 is ready for gaming. Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. In case you are living under a rock and you have no idea what Fedora is all about, I'm going to give a quick presentation here to, to keep you up to speed. So Fedora is developed by the Fedora project and sponsored by Red Hat. So Fedora is more like community oriented and Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a distro more oriented towards the professional. But what really like links them is that Fedora is upstream of Red Hat. So you will have the opportunity to test all the new features developed by the Red Hat team through Fedora. And that's the reason why I believe like this distribution is so so famous around the Linux user. So I won't be really political because I don't think this is my place. I know people love Red Hat. I know over hate Red Hat for certainly like a lot of good reason. But here I'm just going to try to see is the latest release of Fedora 40 is good for gaming. Now, why am I making the link between Red Hat and Fedora? Well, it's pretty important because this Fedora 40 release is going to be the distribution will be used as a base for Red Hat 10. So you have to understand like this release is really important for Red Hat because this release has to be solid to support the enterprise version of their product. And to add another layer of context there and my personal experience with Fedora, I did try Fedora 38 at release and the, the experience was awful. Fedora 39 was a little bit better in terms of experience, but it was quite not there. And spoiler alert, this Fedora 40 is actually way better. I would say this is the best experience I ever had within uh, the Fedora, I would call that like franchisee. Like this is the best Fedora so far for me, but it's not perfect. Before we jump into the positive, I need to mention that the spin I'm going to be testing in this video is the KDE spin. When I do all my testing for gaming, I stick to KDE because so far it is the desktop environment that fits the best all my needs and also the one which is has the, the best like performance related uh, to gaming with my hardware. Now let's talk about the positive. The installation process was really slim. Everything went through pretty well. I had no issue installing this distro on my PC. I have to say that uh, the experience was almost perfect. Everything went straight to the point. I had multiple options. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you in the video like how, how we went through. If you want to see the full video, I'm going to put a link below with the stream because I do that with you guys uh, every Friday. We try a new distro together and see if it's actually ready for gaming on Linux. Um, but e everything went fine. Uh, no problem at all. Another point I want to mention is the fact that KDE and Discover is really well integrated within the distro. You can use Discover to install your application. It's actually like pretty like streamlined. I, I really like it. It's Something that I have to mention because on over distro, you are not supposed to use discover, for example, like arch and here, like you can do everything through it. And I have to say that this is pretty good. If you are allergic to the terminal, you can go and do everything at this point uh, through discover. So good one there. Another good point, and in my opinion, this one is one of the best is the fact that Fedora delivered their new package manager called DNF5. So it's not packaged with Fedora 40 out of the box. You have to install another package called DNF5 to actually use it and then create a little alias to have DNF linking to the new version of DNF, DNF5. Yeah, I know I'm repeating myself. Sorry about that. But this package manager is awesome. One of my previews uh, complaint I had was the fact that DNF was so slow, but now it's getting way faster and this is really enjoyable to go and do your updates. Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. And by the way, Fedora is not a stable release, right? Like their release cycle is every six months 
And I was surprised by the fact that some of the packages were actually newer than Arch. So again, like you're going to have a lot of updates. It's really like nice to have a package manager that delivers the update in a faster way. So again, DNA5, amazing. Now let's talk about gaming. So when it comes to gaming, the kernel itself delivered with the distro obviously is not optimized out of the box for gaming. However, it will be really easy for you guys to install a Cache OS kernel, the board version, through the COPAR. So COPAR, uh, C-O-P-R, is the equivalent of the AUR for Fedora. But I have to say, like installing this kernel was a breeze, and this was uh, a game changer for my experience on the distro. So this is good. You don't have to compile anything. You just go with this kernel. It's pre-compiled. You download it and boom, you restart. You're good to go. The second good point relative to gaming is the fact that all the native applications are actually present and easy to install for gaming. And when I'm talking about application, I'm talking about Steam. I'm talking about Lutris. I'm talking about Heroic. You can install them natively. So some are already uh, there in the repo, like Steam and Lutris. Heroic is not, but you can still go and download it. I think this is amazing because you don't want to be in a position where you want to use Flatpak uh, on top of everything else. I know for you, some of you guys, you don't care. But if you start to, to go a little bit deeper, you're going to have to use Flatseal to, to give more permission, to have access to your hard drive, etc., etc. And it can be a little bit of a pain. Uh, this is native. You are good to go. Everything works out of the box. And another like positive point is related to game mode. Uh, let's say you don't want to install a custom kernel. Well, you have game mode available for you. That's going to give you a significant boost uh, with the kernel delivered by Fedora. I will still not recommend doing that. I prefer going with a, a custom kernel way. Uh, like that, you know, everything is optimized all the time, not only when you game. So it's your choice, but game mode is there out of the box if you are not feeling great about installing a custom kernel. Now the content creation. When it comes to content creation, again, a big win for Fedora. OBS is ready uh, and available natively on uh, the distro, which is a big, big plus. Again, we avoid flat pack. Uh, my experience was great. It come with all the plugins that are required for, you know, streaming and creating content. The most important for me being like OBS browser. But you have also the opportunity to add more OBS plugins directly from the repo. You don't have to go and download them and, and you know, install them in your folder there. You just type the command and you're going to have a list of a uh, really interesting uh, plugin ready to go, like uh, OBS VK Capture, for example. Everything is ready to go through Terminal or through Discover, and this is awesome. Now let's talk about the negative. At this point, you're like, man, like this is a pretty solid start. But this is the thing. Somehow, on this Fedora 40, there is some stuff which are uh, quite discutable. So the first one is the fact that Fedora Ditch X11. If you install Fedora 40, you will land on Wayland. And I was kind of skeptical about this one because with the NVIDIA card, Wayland right now is not ready at all. We are expecting the 555 driver in like 10 days. But now as I'm recording this video and after, you know, like live streaming the installation of Fedora 40 on this channel, I'm telling you, it will, it's, it's, it's still risky to start on Wayland out of the box, but it worked. However, if you want to have the best experience until the release of the new driver and the implementation of them in a more like stable way, uh, you're going to have to use X11. The bad news is that you're going to have to go through the terminal. You're going to have to go through their wiki. It's not hard. Don't get me wrong. It's not hard, but there is so many uh, tutorials on Fedora and it's easy to fall in the trap to, you know, use a tutorial which is totally outdated it's going to break everything we went through it it was not hard again but you have to be conscientious and know what you are doing so that's the first negative the second negative is really like a fedora thing and a red hat thing because they are like an enterprise they can't really distribute uh, the free codec 
uh, they really want to stay like really open source from the beginning to the end and some of the codecs they can't have them on their repo or in the installation and so here it's, it's another issue because out of the box, your experience is not going to be great. You won't have the codec, for example, to watch a Twitch video on your Firefox. You're going to have to add uh, a repository called RPM Fusion and then install the codec. Again, nothing bad. I think they did a great job like to putting everything in one command line, but you still have to do it. And in my opinion, it's, it is a negative. Sorry, guys. But it's it's a negative. There is some distro out there. You just install the distro and it works. You don't have to tweak anything. Same thing for the NVIDIA driver. They are proprietary. They can provide them. Again, one command line to install them. To be fair, it was pretty easy and straight to the point. It's a negative, but a positive at the same time. Because I remember before, installing the NVIDIA driver was a pain. It was a pain. And while we are talking about the NVIDIA driver, when you install them and you reboot for the first time, it's really related to Fedora because Fedora always do like their own things. And we're going to talk about it after. You're going to notice that your first boot on NVIDIA driver is going to be really long. It's going to be like one minute, one minute 30. Whereas normally it should be like 25 seconds. It's going to be three to four times, sometimes five times uh, the normal boot time. And the reason why is that when you install the drivers of the first time, they need to be registered in the way it works in Fedora, like it just proposes you a black screen. But your computer didn't crash, it's just what it is. So at this moment, you just need to wait, finish the process, everything's going to go fine, and you go there. So it works, but I would have loved them to have some type of like image saying like installing your driver or like something appearing on your screen because I know there is a lot of new users. I was one of them when I tried the Fedora 39. We're going to just like reset the computer saying like, damn, I had a black screen. But it's not a real black screen. It's just loading the driver. So it was a little like, you know, coma, but be aware of this one. And now we're talking about the fact that Fedora like to do how they want. Well, uh, I encountered an issue while I was gaming. And I think it's a big issue, and I'm going to explain you exactly what it is. So during the stream, uh, what I do most of the time, I test four games. I test two native games, and I test two games that run through Proton. And one of the native games wouldn't load my save while like starting the game. So the game in question is called Valheim. It's, it's a nice little game. It's actually awesome. And when I say small, it's not small, but it's not heavy to run. It's, it's, this game is just awesome, guys. And so I had this world in which I spent so much time. I wanted to load it, but I could not load it. I would have like a crash. The game would just like disappear. One of my viewers, Nighthall, if you watch the video, he told me that he was related to Fedora, but it wouldn't make any sense, right? It wouldn't make any sense. And so I started a new game without loading this world and everything went fine. So I was like, you know what? Maybe uh, when I did my test, my cloud save got corrupted. And that's the reason why I can load it. However, because I was curious, after finishing the stream, I went on my uh, Cache OS, which is my main operating system for the last six months, almost seven months right now. And I launched the save. And guess what? It was working. So now I know what the issue really was. My save was not corrupted. What happened is that the Steam packaged by Fedora is not. 100% supporting all the native games. And I thought I was the only one, but if you go on ProtonDB, you're going to see there is two or three reports of users mentioning the fact that the game doesn't run on Fedora 40. So it's, it's actually pretty insane. So what is the point of all of that? Fedora, they like to sometimes reinvent the wheel. So they will move some dependencies, some packages from one folder to another because they they believe this is a new way to do it, right? But the issue is that some game like Valheim, which I do believe kind of like rely on, on dependency when it's running native, well, they don't find them and they just crash. That's, that's my explanation there. But you need to understand that it's, it's a problem which is kind of like relevant because sometimes they innovate too much. They change the normal way to their you know, new way 
whether it's a good way or not, right? Like I'm not, I'm, I don't want to go there. I don't want to get political. But as a user, you're going to be impacted. And this is one example. Another example is like I was trying to understand if they were loading the NVIDIA driver correctly with all the modules. And they do. So this is a good point. But because they change everything in the way like they put, the, you know, the config file for generating the initramfs, the config file for loading the module, etc., you, you have to relearn a little bit the Fedora way. And if you were on Debian or Arch, it would be exactly the same thing. But on Fedora, they like to do their own stuff. So to me, it's a negative, right? Because if it's, if it's just like, you know, some little change and you have to learn them, well, it's, it's negative, but it's not that bad. But if this is a big change and impacts your gaming experience, from a gamer perspective, I can tell you guys that you can have a great experience because on four games, one was half broken. I hope they're going to solve it. I don't believe it's, it's going to be hard to do, but this is how it is right now. So how do we conclude this one? Well, it's going to be pretty clear. I'm really impressed by the improvement related to Fedora for the likes, like I would say, 12 months, right? So the, this release, the Fedora 40, is to me the best Fedora release so far for gaming. Because you just install it, which is super like clean. You put your kernel, you install your driver if you are using NVIDIA, and well, it's done. Like you, you, you don't have a lot to do. I would say, yes, you need to install X11, but overall, like it's going to be like a 15 to 20 minute um, process just to go through that. And then you're going to have a solid distro. However, guys, however, like I, I was really thinking this one is going to be the one and I'm going to switch to it because I, I, I want to switch out of, of Cache OS or maybe reinstall it because I want you to, I want to provide you like more content. And Cache OS right now is so stable. I'm like, uh, you know, like I, it just works and, and I'm getting used to Arch. So I'm like, maybe I want to try something else to, to provide content for you guys. But I'm like, man, like this Fedora could have been the one. But in this state right now, it's not. I think you can go through every problem, every, every issue there uh, pretty easily. So the negatives are not that bad. But the, the fact that the packages are sometimes like broken, like, like Steam, and half broken, like it's really hard to detect if something is wrong, right? I'm like, uh, can I can I really like you know go with this one? And personally, again, this is just me. I would say no, okay, because the alternative here would be to to install Steam on Flatpak, but I don't want to do that. Like, I, I I don't feel like it. I like to have uh, Steam installed natively. So yeah, that's uh, that's a Fedora there, <laughs> like. It could have been the one, but mm, little, little problem like that. But yeah, that's it. So if you love Red Hat, if you want to go and run this Fedora, go for it. I do believe this is, this is the best one so far. They, they have been, been doing a great job. But yeah, it, it won't be the one for me. It's, it's not going to be the one for me. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I wish you to have a great rest of your day and I see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.